You know, one of these days I'm gonna have to like make up an intro for one of these because every time I don't, I don't. There's no really. It's not really an intro. It's just like a like a cold open or something. I don't know. Like a really terrible cold open. But at this point, I. I <sighs> Uh, Jason, comics or not, comics or not, can you ever stop? So, oh, we, the gender talk is so cool, you just fucking stop, man. Just, just don't kill the series. Just like, why? Every time I want to kill off this fucking series, I, you guys just keep clawing it back to life, and it's just like, what the fuck, man? Uh, let's see, let's make something, I'll make something up right now. Uh, hello, everybody, my name is uh, Comics or Not, and, uh, 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 uh Hello everybody, my name is Comics or Not, and uh, today's episode is sponsored by uh, water. Uh, go ahead and drink some. Uh, uh, anywho, welcome back to Degenerate Talk Episode 9. Episode 1 feels like it came out like 15 million years ago, dude. I mean, it was in 2020, so it might as well have been... Uh, I've been meaning to... Look, guys, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, every episode has been unprepared. Uh, there's been no uh, passion put into any of them. It's, it's so fucking lazy, okay? And you guys want it because it sounds cool. It's either because, oh, Kong Schnell, your voice is so cool, man. Oh, your voice really turns me on, man. Or it's like, oh, you actually talk about uh, uh, really good topics. And just, it's like, every time I listen back to these, I can't help but want to, 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 to I can't help but imagine a world where I never made the, episode one in the first place and everybody left me alone and yeah, everything was all quiet and dandy and yeah, I wouldn't get spammed with memes about uh, bring back the gender talk <laughs> but no we're here now so yeah so for today's episode we're doing another general topic because I didn't have a topic so yeah so let's get into it. What's 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 going on? What's going on in the world of comic? Th these past like two years for the comic book industry have been really fucking weird. I mean, obviously, it, it took a pandemic for publishers to realize that maybe there needs to be a different method of moving forward and surviving because we have been feasting off the same food for the past twenty five years. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> You've been feeding off the same fucking table scraps for like 25, 30 years. So, it, 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 come on my face. Come on my fucking face, guys. I was wrong. But Marvel Comics has officially, mostly for the most part, left Diamond Distributions. They're there for some capacity, but not for the comic books. Marvel has moved their distribute. Basically, for all you guys who don't know what I'm saying, like Marvel Comics isn't getting their comics distributed by Diamond anymore, which is, uh, I didn't see it coming, but I kind of did, but in my pat in like the last couple of episodes, I was like, Marvel's not gonna fucking do anything, so, <laughs> just don't fucking, but, you know, like, I, whatever, well, shit, shit coming out of my own ass, okay, shit coming out of my own ass, but, you know what, it makes sense, because, uh, from a lot of talk I've had or heard from people that have been reading comics longer than me. Marvel and DC have this unspoken uh, thing where every time they want to experiment, DC goes first, okay? DC, Marvel and, Marvel and DC meet in the, in the front of the New York alley, and across the alley is a group of beautiful women who look like they, uh, one of them has an STD, but they don't know which one, right? So, Marvel and DC, in all their infinite wisdom, flip a coin to see which one is the one that's going to go in and figure out which girl has it. And for some reason, every time they flip the coin, DC always fucking loses, and they go in first. And then after Marvel finds out how bad things look for DC, they're going second, and they'll come out a little bit more uh, safe. You know, that's that's the way it's always worked for these publishers for like ever. Because, eh. 
Uh, another thing I wanted to address. Wait, oh, wait, oh, hold on. We'll, we'll stay that. We'll stay at the topic for a little while. I guess now that DC and Marvel are basically not with Diamond anymore, I, I just expect Diamond distributions to not be a thing within at least the next two to five years because. Uh, just a, t- a, TLD- a, t- a TLDR, right? For the fucking people that don't know, uh, Marvel and DC accounted for like what fucking. I want to say both of them combined were like 70% of the fucking company's income or something like that. Uh, Sorry, I'm drinking soda. The water thing was just a fucking bit, okay? I have acid running through my veins. Uh, DC was like like a smaller chunk than Marvel's. Marvel was like a majority cut for Diamond. And now that both of them are fucking gone... Diamond's not gonna be here for a fucking for fucking. Diamond's not gonna be around for a while, okay? And you know what? Good because uh, for those of you that don't know, Diamond distributions are part of the. In my opinion, in the opinion of a lot of others, Diamond is part of the reason that comics don't sell as well or don't make as much money as they used to be because uh, Diamond is a monopoly or was a monopoly, and they were they had lazy business habits. They weren't complacent in their own fucking chair. They were basically a fucking neglectful father, you know what I'm saying? You know, for all you people that have neglectful fathers, you know what I'm fucking saying. The one that doesn't call them, come to the ball games, or one that doesn't fucking care about your grades or some shit, you know what I'm saying? And it, it was never, no, it was never more apparent than during the beginning of the pandemic back in March, where uh, Diamond basically were not going to pay DC and Marvel their fucking cuts because they didn't have any fucking money because. Uh, they have, they've been doing the same business practices for like 30 fucking years, which means they have not progressed at all. But anywho, good riddance to Diamond. Uh, let's see, another thing I wanted to talk about was... Oh yeah, the rumors that... <laughs> the fucking rumors, the, 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 the cafeteria lunchroom table talk rumors that, uh... AT&T are selling DC Comics and people have been bidding for it or some shit. I think the latest one was that Robert Kirkman wanted to fuck... The guy who made The Walking Dead and Invincible, he wanted to buy DC Comics and there was one where, like, a publishing company wanted to buy DC Comics and it's like, those are not fucking real because, let me tell you something, if Disney did not fucking go in for DC Comics, if the billion dollar company did not want to go in for DC Comics... I always think Robert Kirkman, a fucking comic book writer, a fucking comic book writer. You think he's gonna fucking want? You, you, you think you think he can afford DC Comics? Let alone Batman. Batman is like a fucking billion dollar. Batman's a billion dollar thing. I know some of you hate Batman because he's all over your fucking books, but look, Batman is a fucking backpack. He's a serial. He, I think Batman has a serial brand. I don't fucking know. He if he doesn't, what the fuck are you doing? You know, but. He, Batman is a brand. He, 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 he's, he's ascended past his fucking comic book character uh, status. He's a fucking brand, okay? Same as Spider-Man. A little, uh, Batman alone is like a billion dollars. You think a comic book writer, or let alone fans of the comic book writers are going to fucking buy DC Comics? There's no fucking way, dude. The fact that that almost blew up as much as, like, back in the beginning of March where Ethan Van Fuckface was like, uh, DC's gonna shut down really soon, guys. DC's gonna shut down because of the, the, the fucking 5G is gonna fucking fail and the SJW stuff. And oh my fucking God, guys, you can't fucking believe it. All this history's gonna go to... And then look, we're still here. We're still here. We're still here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, another thing I wanted to say is... Uh, Heroes Reborn is being uh, is a thing again. Heroes Reborn, the Marvel fucking event. <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, Mar- Heroes Reborn was a thing back in the nineties. I think. I think it was after the. I think it was in the nineties or, or yeah. Uh, and it was as lame as it looks like now. I'm not gonna get into it because that's a oh, it's its own fucking episode. But TLDR. Uh, these comic book characters don't sell. We need to fucking make them sell, man. What are we gonna fucking do? Oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna reboot. 
quote unquote reboot because Marvel, right? I think the problem with Heroes Are Born is my fucking problem with Jason Aaron's Avengers because Jason Aaron's Avengers is so fucking terrible. It's just it's it's like it's like it's like back when you were a fucking five year old child banging action toys together, man. And it's like go action man, go action man, and for the firefighter from the fucking Lego play center, fucking teaming up to beat the to beat the firebots. It's like shit like that. You know, like, like, it's like, like every, every ish, every time I go, every time I try to go back into Jason Aaron's Avengers, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, he's just like tossing shit together. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like ideas wrapped in duct tape and has like plastic wrap all over, all over this fucking thing. Like, it's a fucking mess. And the fact that he's not off the book and it hasn't been canceled is beyond my fucking wildest imaginations because like. If I worked at Marvel, I would fucking fu- I, I would I, I would take him off the book. And Heroes Are Born is just another attempt for Jason Aaron to be like, I want this cool thing to be a thing. Wouldn't it be cool if this thing was a thing? It wouldn't be cool if it, it, it wouldn't be cool if, if Thor's mob was the Phoenix. And the fans are like, uh, that actually does not make sense in continuity at all. And you, you like, oh yeah, but wouldn't it be cool though. No. <laughs> uh, another thing. Uh, we got. We got. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to make a post on uh, the success of five G. Five G is one of those things where it's like, I feel like newer readers like five G more than the older ones. Like, mostly because like. For for most older comic readers, it's like if it's not this, this, and this, if the, if this character isn't this, this, and this, I'm not gonna fucking read it. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna fucking read that book. If, if Batman's not a white billionaire guy, I'm not gonna fucking read it. And you know what? It's fine. Like we all have our preferences. If you guys want your characters to be like a certain thing, hey, you know, like it's been this thing for you. Like Peter Parker always has to be a fucking you know whatever the fuck he is, and you, it's 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 the nature of the fucking comic book beast. Okay. People like continuity for the reason that it, it, it makes things balanced, quote-unquote, because, you know. But for 5G, 5G was a really good tune-up of 5G, because, you know, 5G never fucking happened. But Future State is basically just 5G, but quote-unquote, you know. And I was really surprised how well... It turned, especially for the fact that most of the five G books went to second printing, so I think most of the, I think I think it was just the Batman stuff. I think, but it still went to second printing, and it surprised me because the sales were actually pretty fucking decent, like decent enough that like some of these series could have been books on their own, like concurrently. And Yara Yara Floor, the Wonder, I think she's Wonder Girl, Wonder Woman, the new Wonder Girl actually is getting her own series, which is. Hey, I liked that book. I also liked the Supergirl book, but nobody fucking bought that, so... Yeah. And... I think that the idea of 5G being a place for new talent to test the waters and see what they would look like on newer books is actually a good idea, because now that most of the writers that were doing 5G were are now doing the books at DC... I kind of like a lot of the books that are coming out. Like, they have, like, like, all the books that are coming out at DC are, like, not bad. Unless you're, like, a Wally, like, a Wally West purist. And, like, for real, like, if anybody thought that evil Wally West book was going to be in continuity, I don't know what to fucking tell you, dude. Maybe you just need to reevaluate your fucking knowledge, but... There's no way that was going to be canon. The fact that people got mad that that just be just because just for the idea, just for the fact that they made Wally evil, pissed people off. It's like what the f- like who cares, dude? And then they're mad. Oh, they made Wally quit. Of course, my Wally wants to fucking qu- quit for a fucking volume. All the shit he went through, dude. Get the fuck out of here, man. <clears throat> if I fucking if, I, if my family was gone for a fucking existence and I accidentally killed people and. My, and I was being toyed with mentally. Uh, of course, of, of course, I'm gonna take a fucking break for a volume or two. We all know. 
We all know that by fucking issue seven or eight, or maybe even fucking ten or some shit, that Wally's gonna be in like a. Here's how it's gonna happen, right? He's gonna be fucking fucking around with his family, like playing with his kids, just a bouncing gyre eye around his fucking knee while his wife's making pancakes or some shit. And, and an evil thing fucking happens. He's like, no, I made a promise to not do, not not to be Flash anymore. I'm not gonna be a Flash anymore. And, and then Linda is gonna be like, but but Wally, you have to be the Flash. You're the fastest man alive. You're the greatest that's ever been. It's like I, you're right, Linda. I I, I am the greatest that's ever lived. He's gonna. <coughs> He's going to put on the fucking Flash suit. He's going to run faster than he's ever been. He's going to see the fucking day. And then he's going to be Flash again. We all know it's going to fucking happen. Why are you so mad about it, dude? Who cares? Who cares? <sighs> Sorry for being mad. We, we, we're, 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 uh, we're, a, we're a happy bunch here at the Jenner Talk Industries. Uh... We we may we may uh we, we we may lose our shit every now and then, but we just want to let you know that uh we value all of our opinions and all of everybody's feelings here at the fucking at, at the fucking place, okay? Just because I indoctrinate young people to believe my opinions on my Instagram page, doesn't mean I don't value them as people. I care about their opinions and their emotions. So go fuck yourself. <sighs> <laughs> that was not funny. <laughs> uh, another thing I wanted to get into was... I think it was Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Um, Marvel brings back What If. Obviously, they're going to use Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man is their top selling character. So... Uh, Marvel brings back What If after so long and so long. And this time, it's different because... It's a mini-series by Chip Zdarsky called Spider Shadow. Issue 1 was fucking great. I'm ready to just call it the book of the year because it's so fucking good. But I like the idea of What Ifs being mini-series because What Ifs as one-shots or single issues don't fucking work anymore because they always leave you... Either they're, either they're so full of fucking dialogue that they're so like irrelevant after a while or they always leave you asking questions... Because there's not enough page, page. There's not not enough real estate to 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 make up the idea. Like there are plenty of what ifs that could have been good if they had gotten another issue or two. But every single what if, aside from like a handful, are so fucking boring or unimaginative or lazily written that it's like it leaves to something to be desired. Like they only work. What ifs only worked. In the beginning, because it was like the 1980s or seven or like nine or some or something, because comics were so disposable. You know, you just read it with one hand, do some shit in the other, throw it away or toss it to the side, and that's it. Now that comics are more niche and the audience that has it are, are more like attentive, I feel like they're gonna want more substance rather than the th one single issue. And I think miniseries are a good way to go because. You know, like more like 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 the, the the new what if is basically what if Spider Man never took off the symbiote symbiote, which we had that there is a, a what if that is that and it, nobody and like it's I think it's the first what if <laughs> I don't know why I'm fucking this. the first what if that ever came out was like what if Spider Man kept the symbiote or some shit and I it's fucking boring. <laughs> It's fucking boring because it's one single fucking page and it's nothing but dialogue. Like there are plenty of what ifs, like the one where uh, what if Punisher killed Spider-Man in his first appearance? What, what, well, that's a fucking good. Like I read that like a while ago, like like a week or like a couple weeks ago. And I and I was like, dude, if this was like a mini series, because the way it ends is so fucking good. Like if that was a mini series, that was like a, th a three or four issue thing. I think that would be fucking remembered. Or uh, the one where, what if Jane Foster became Thor? Not, not, not the, not you know. This was way before the idea of that. That was like, but like that's a good one too because like she calls herself Thordis or some shit and she looks fucking cool and I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. Should have got a mini series of that, and then she could have showed up later in life. She could, she could have been the Jane Foster of 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 of, of, of six one whatever the fuck the universe is six one six. Ah. But yeah, also, 
I want to add something about Chip Zdarsky's new mini. Like, Chip Zdarsky has been killing it as of the last couple of years. Like, if none of you have been reading Chip Zdarsky's books, his Daredevil, his Howard the Duck, his, uh, I think, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man or Spectacular Spider-Man, I don't fucking remember. And he's at DC now, which, oh, which, by the way, Chip Zdarsky is no longer, uh, Chip Zdarsky no longer has an exclusive contract with Marvel, and I wanted to talk about that because, as of recently, there have been a lot of droppings, like, people have been dropping exclusive contracts with, uh, writers and publishers, like, Bendis is no longer an exclusive at DC, he can go back to Marvel anytime he fucking wants, he probably won't, though. Uh, and I think this is a good, it's good and, like, sad, because it's, like, the pandemic set up this thing where, like, people, like, people that were exclusive to Marvel or DC or certain publishers that were under exclusive contracts were, like, either, like, going broke or were becoming poor because the pandemic didn't allow for a lot of books, like, so a lot of books got canceled, a lot of books got on hiatus, a lot of books, you know, like, so on, so on. So it's finally good to understand that, like, exclusive contracts are fucking, like, Going the way of the fucking dodo, so good rinse to that because comic book writers and creators like that in general are underpaid and they got no insurance and all that. So yeah, glad, glad to see Chip Zdarsky fucking finally getting what he deserves, which is a good fucking paycheck. <laughs> okay, and I want to see what are we at? Twenty one minutes. Uh, let's see, final topic. Uh, I wanted to get, I, I wanted to get into, uh, the fact that things are looking so bright for the future of the industry. A lot of books nowadays are getting second printings. Beta Ray Bill got second printing on issue number one, or, or third triple printings. Keanu Reeves Berserker, that fucking movie pitch comic, got, like, what, th- three or four reprintings or some shit? And honestly, I'm not willing to say it's because of movies or the media in general because the cup doesn't run it over with comic with comic book movies, unfortunately. I want to say it's because the pandemic has finally, like, the pandemic happened, people needed new hobbies, and people found comics. And that's cool. Like, it's cool to see things finally coming up because, like, a lot of books are getting second printings. Nightwing... Tom Taylor's Nightwing got a second printing. I'll bet you his Superman, his Superman, which got which just got announced, got a, is going to get a, pr- a second printing as well. And I couldn't be more happier seeing creators succeed and just overall like the industry growing and finally expanding and being more innovative as a result. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think I'm going to call it there because uh, I know there are going to be some people like. Why don't you talk about movie stuff? Talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Talk about the Invincible TV show. Um, I'm not a movie guy, okay? I just read these fucking paper things. I, I, I buy digitally. I just I just read comics. I don't know what to tell you. Okay? Like, if a movie's cool, me, I'll be like, hey, that movie was cool, but I didn't even see the fucking Snyder Cut, so... What am I gonna tell you? But anyway, I'm your host, Degenerate. I, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your host... Degenerate Talk. I'm your host, Comics or Not. This has been Degenerate Talk, Episode 9. Who knows, we'll get to 10. And I'll see ya in the fucking next one.